Hello, this is Mocha Product Manager Martin Brennan, and welcome to this short tutorial on Remove Module Optimization. Note that this is an intermediate tutorial, so if you're not familiar with the Remove Module workflow, I do recommend you go and check out some of our free training material first, which is available on the website. So, here's our problem. The Mocha Remove module is great at looking at your whole shot and removing your objects based on tracked planes. But if you don't optimize the parameters in the Remove module first, you're going to be waiting a longer time than necessary. Today, I'm going to be working inside the Mocha VR plugin for After Effects, but these techniques apply to all versions of Mocha Pro and Mocha VR. So, let's take a look at the six areas you can use to optimize your remove process. The first optimization is really just a bit of workflow maintenance. If you're testing out your remove in a very large shot, we recommend that you start in a lower proxy mode to track the shot and then test the remove. So by this, I mean if you're in the host, you would set something like your proxy settings here in After Effects, or if you're inside the standalone, here in Mocha VR 551, you would come up here to the proxy settings and set a 1 to 1, a 1 to 2 for half proxy, or 1 to 4 for quarter res, and then cache that through. This just makes it a lot faster to work with when you're tracking and removing when you're testing your remove to begin with. Mocha is normally more than capable of tracking low resolution footage, and you can also get a pretty good idea of the final result when you do remove tests in proxy mode. When it comes time to finally doing removes on your full resolution footage, we recommend pre-caching by playing back the clip. Sometimes it's not going to be possible to pre-cache the whole clip when you get into the thousands of frames, but it will definitely speed up the remove process to have those frames ready to go. If you're only going to be using a portion of the frames in Mocha for the remove, make sure that the first frame here and the last frame here match your project range in the timeline, so you're not using too many frames. This means Mocha's not wasting time looking at parts of your shot that don't matter to the remove. It's important to make sure the frames before and the frames after parameters have sensible values. These values are how far in time to look ahead or behind the current frame for background information. If you're looking a thousand frames before the current frame and there's no useful background information there, you're wasting processing time. For example here, we're using all 574 frames to look ahead and behind the current playhead position. So to check how many frames we actually need, we can scrub through the shot and see how the foreground and background are behaving. So here we've got this nice convenient line in the path here. So around 270, I can see here that it's stopped in front of this line. And if I scrub forward in time, he's now passed over the line at about 297. So at most we need to look maybe 30 or 50 frames before and after to find useful background information to replace this rig. So I can go ahead and use that value in my frames before and frames after. So to do this what I'm going to do is go over to my uber key so I don't make a keyframe and I'm going to change this to 50 and frames after to 50. So then I'll turn off my uber key so I don't accidentally leave it on. And now I'm only going to be looking before 50 frames and after 50 frames. Now obviously if you set this value too small you are going to start to see artifacts because it's not looking ahead or behind enough to get the available information. So find that balance and everything will be nice and fast. If the scene is moving very slowly, especially for high frame rate footage, consider changing the step value. A step value of 1 checks every single frame for background data, a step value of 2 checks every second frame, and so on. This can dramatically increase the speed of your removal. For example, in this particular rig removal that we've got here, just changing the step to 2 increased the speed of the removal by about 40%. Be aware of course that if you step too far, you'll start to see problems. Always make sure that you start by setting your illumination modeling to none, the default value. This is by far the fastest way to do a remove. If there are obvious light changes in your remove, then try stepping up to linear, which will handle many cases. You don't need to use interpolated illumination modeling unless you absolutely have to for flickering or dappled light. It is very processor intensive for large shots, and in many instances, you may be better suited to using it with clean plates. And while we're on that, 
To speed up removes significantly, consider using clean plates and the use clean plates exclusively option. The major advantage of this is it reduces the need to check every frame for background information and it will only reference the clean plates that you make. The main downside of this method is that for very long or rapidly changing shots, you may need a series of clean plates over time to get good results, which means a bit more manual work. In most cases, a good starting point is to make a clean plate at the start of the shot, at the end of the shot, and in the middle of the shot, but you may need more depending on what is happening in your footage. You can speed up the process of painting clean plates slightly by rendering the frame in remove first and then making a clean plate from the rendered results so you don't have as much paintwork to do, if any. For example here, I could actually do a remove on the first frame and then make a clean plate from the results. So here I don't even actually need to do any Photoshop work because it's made a nice clean remove. So I come over here to my clean plate, click create and then save that here and replace what I've already got there. And now this frame will be used as my first clean plate and will be referenced by use clean plates exclusively in frame zero. So we can see that here if we look at our clean plate, our first frame is right here. So now that one frame is going to be used to help drive the rest of the remove in the shot. Now in some cases because of the static plate nature of clean plates you will have to use the illumination modelling but it's still going to be faster than checking every single frame and greatly improve the render times. Now one more important thing to note with clean plates exclusively is that if you're using a step value that has to be in sync with your clean plate frames otherwise it may actually skip your clean plate and cause some artifacts. For example if your step value was something like 6 Mocha would ignore a clean plate that was created on frame 5 because it would step over it. So with these basic changes you should see vast improvements to your render times. In particular cases you'll definitely need to render a slower shot, but the time saved overall will still be advantageous. As always, if you have any questions, please do get in touch with us via the Imagineer Systems website. Thanks very much, and goodbye.